Tally there, Champs, and welcome to the show. Today, I'll be showing you my recommendations for the cheapest way to get into the Mac. If you want to go into Mac, you know Apple computers are expensive, but you still can get into Mac on the cheap, and I'll show you my recommendations. Now, you could get a Mac Mini, but I don't think they're really good devices, and plus, you probably want a laptop if you want a Mac. This is a 211. MacBook Pro 13 inch. I've seen these for sub $300, and that's Australian dollars. Now, you will not get one that's in great condition for that, and what I mean by that is there's gonna be something wrong with it. Either the battery's dead, the hard drive's dead, or something like that. In the case of this Mac here, its battery is dead. I mean, it's 62% now, and it's only been going not even 20 minutes. It's on its last legs, and this battery could die at any minute. It only has 4 gigs RAM, this one, and you can upgrade it to 8 gigs, which is great. The hard drive's dead. These models here is, are what I call the last good MacBooks, and they were fully upgradable. And this model here actually comes with a DVD drive, which, well, is pretty much useless, but this one's dead in this one. So it has all those things wrong with it, and that, that brings down the price. Now, a good condition one will probably cost you over $500, but consider getting one of these that has something like that wrong with it, as long as it works and the screen works, I think you're good to go. If all you have to do is replace the hard drive, the battery, and the DVD drive doesn't work, or any combination of that sort of problem, well, it's so easy to upgrade, and you get it so cheap. I've worked out it's gonna cost about $250 Australian, so that's less than $200 US, this is like 125 pounds or something like that to get this up to somewhere near modern spec. So to get eight gig RAM, to get a new battery, and to get a new SSD, it's gonna cost around 250 Australian dollars. And then you're virtually nearly up to modern spec. I mean, the new MacBook Pro 13 inch, it has a much better screen than this, yes, but it's not that much more powerful. It's not like night and day. With eight gigs RAM, this will still be able to edit 1080p and Final Cut Pro, it'll pretty much do what the new 13 inch MacBook Pro can do, albeit a little bit slower. Now the screen on this is, it's not even full HD, it's still a decent screen, it's really nice. It's only 800p, so it's not 1080p, but it is HD, it's still higher than 720p, so it still actually is HD. Still got a 720p webcam, and it's got a dual core i5 in this model here. And the keyboard on this is much better than the new Macs. This is when the Macs were really good. It's not that much heavier than thicker than the new MacBook Pro 13 inches. It weighs 4.5 pounds or 2 kilos and it's 0 0.95 inches thick or 2.41 centimeters thick. So it is a little bit thicker because it has got that DVD drive there compared to the 13 inch 2015 MacBook Pro that I had. I don't feel that this is much bigger and chunkier than that. It is a bit thicker and heavier, but it's not a great deal. So really, does it look that much different to the new one? Like, I don't think it looks that much different, to be honest. It is thicker, and it's still loaded with ports. So you still have Thunderbolt. You have the original Thunderbolt there. You have FireWire 800, which is old now. You've only got USB Type 2s here. You have got Ethernet, so that's awesome. You have an SD card slot there, you have the headphone jacks, and then you have you have the power indicator button and the LED lights there. You also have the MagSafe, and on the other side it's pretty much just the Kensington lock and the slot. Doesn't look that much different, it is a bit chunkier. There is a bit of a difference, but hey, sub $300, $500 brought right up to spec. I'd say it's a good deal now. Open her up. So that's inside, and it's so easy. I've taken the hard drive out already. Just put it, I'm gonna put a new SSD, this thing, who cares? I'm just gonna take it out, just to lose a bit of weight. Uh, who needs a DVD drive these days? Um, you have two slots here, and you can upgrade to eight gigabytes RAM there. And this is a 65 watt hour battery, I believe, and that's very easy to replace. It's like, just take that little thing off there, just and then just pull it out, and that's it, basically. So it's very easy to upgrade. As I said before, it's the last of the good Macs, it really is. I can put our Capitan on this. 
this is a perfectly good Mac. It will work well. I'll be able to do most things. I'll be able to do Photoshop. I'll be able to do Final Cut Pro, just normal full HD and web surf and YouTube. It'll be fine. And I'll be able to use all the Mac apps I like. And it's only going to cost me around $500 Australian. So that's like 350 American. So it's so cheap or around 250 pounds. And these things are decent too. You get around uh, seven hours battery life, six, seven hours on these. So the battery life is decent on them too. And they've got a fair bit of power. It's a, it's a dual core i5 in there. It's not, it's much more powerful than that stupid MacBook thing with the Pentium M in it. Like it blows that away. So you get the full Mac experience. So don't be scared of secondhand products. So there you have it. That's my recommendations. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. That helps me out. I've got lots more tech content coming soon. So please subscribe if you want to see that. And until next time, guys, tally ho.